the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. And in one of his final speeches, a few days before he was assassinated, he was asked by a journalist, why are you speaking out against the Vietnam War? Aren't there enough problems in America? Aren't there enough problems for black people in America? And there were problems for black people in America. Black people didn't have the votes in the south of America, the southern states of America. They, didn't, uh, they were lynched in the southern states of America. And he said, some people do something and say something because it's politic. Some people do it because it's consensual. Some people do it because it's expedient. I do it because it's right. And then he says, justice, my friends, is indivisible. How can you talk of justice in Virginia and Vermont if you don't talk of justice in Vietnam? And our next speaker will roar justice from Bradford to Baghdad and around the world, George Galloway. Distinguished elders, brothers and sisters, comrades and friends, assalamu alaikum. This has been a truly remarkable rally. It's not the end, but it's been a truly remarkable campaign. I don't know if my opponent in this election is going to have an election rally. But if he is, it won't look like this one. It won't, it won't look like this one because my opponent doesn't stand for anything. Malcolm's been mentioned several times. Brother Malcolm X said, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And we stand for something here. We stand for justice and hack. <laughs> justice and hack is our belief. Many of us, myself included, believe that for religious reasons. Others believe it, though they are not religious. We've made a coalition, not just here in Bradford, but in the 11 years, almost since 9-11, and since the foundation of the anti-war movement, we made a coalition of millions of people who marched to defend Muslim country after country from imperialist war and occupation. One of the most remarkable interviews I've ever given in my life was on television today. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it, but you really must. On BBC iPlayer, my brother Amir has it. It'll be out on Facebook and on our YouTube and so on. We had a man who, by the way, can barely string two sentences together. That's just good. I wouldn't ordinarily be personal, but this is a man that wants to represent you in Parliament. He says he's a barrister. I don't know what bar he got his qualifications. <laughs> sentences together. <coughs> and that's not a good qualification for being a member of Parliament. <laughs> Trust me. Being local, being the local boy who can't speak <laughs> is not the best qualification for being a member of Parliament. But in, in, that, in that interview, two remarkable things happened. I don't know if they made it 
onto the screen if they survive the edit because I haven't seen it yet myself. Firstly, I invited him to condemn Tony Blair and George Bush for killing a million people in Iraq. And you know what? He sat there with his lips zipped together. Three times I asked him, will you condemn Bush and Blair as the terrorists who killed a million Muslims in Iraq? And he refused to do so. This is pretty odd actually because nobody obviously had told them that the Labour Party has changed. Ed Miliband has apologised for the war. He, he could have. He could have condemned Tony Blair. It's allowed now. But nobody had told him right. So he sat there like a big palooka, like a big dummy, <laughs> unable to open his mouth to say yes or no. But the second thing was much more relevant and much more vital and important to this moment. The presenter attacked me several times, in fact. The presenter attacked me, and the BBC website does again this evening, for saying, well, I was a boxer, you know. <laughs> that attacks me gets attacked back. <laughs> the presenter attacked me and said, you want to withdraw the British Army from Afghanistan. Is this not an insult, he said, to the families of the six dead Yorkshire soldiers, five of them aged under 21, one of them from Bradford, who came back in coffins over the last few weeks. I said, well, those soldiers have already been withdrawn from Afghanistan. Unfortunately, they were withdrawn from Afghanistan stiff and cold. And I want to withdraw our soldiers from Afghanistan before more of them are brought back in the box stiff and cold. Moreover, moreover, I want them and the Americans withdrawn before they massacre any more Afghan civilians, women and children like the ones that were killed in Kandahar just a week or so ago. I don't want any more bloodshed in Afghanistan in a war that's lasted longer, as Clive said than the First and Second World Wars put together. And for what? What has been achieved in this war in Afghanistan for all the blood and all the treasure that it has cost? Martyrs! It is a, an article of faith for me that these imperialist invasions and occupations must be opposed by us first and foremost we don't want to see our soldiers killed, and we don't want to see them killing other people for Tony Blair and George W. So, having said that to the presenter, he then turned to Imran Hussein, <laughs> who said, I support the mission in Afghanistan. Well, I oppose the mission in Afghanistan. And it's a funny what mission, yeah? Slaughtering people with drones and from airplanes and with high-powered guns and slaughtering children in their beds as happened in Kandahar. Sixteen people Nine of them children, three of them women, murdered in their beds in the night, in their sleep, by an American sergeant wielding an automatic rifle. Now, actually, I believe that most British people, and for that matter, most American people, no longer support Imran's mission. 
<laughs> and I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. A guy who's going around telling you you should vote for him because he's a Muslim when he supports a mission that's massacring Muslims in Afghanistan has got a real problem. made it onto the screen. You've just committed political suicide. You've just committed political suicide. Don't make me wrong on that. We have to, as Yvonne said, Sister Yvonne Ridley said, we, and, and Clive said, we have to punish these people. If they can do these crimes and then get re-elected, why should they stop doing the crimes? If they do these crimes and you keep sending them back, the parliament, why should they stop them if they can have their cake and eat it? And in Tower Hamlets in 2005, as Councillor Abjol said, we had an MP, Una King, now in the Lords, Lady King, who voted for the war in Iraq even though 90% of the people in Tower Hamlets begged her not to vote for this war. But she did it because she thought she could do it and get away with it. And we proved in 2005 that she could not get away with it. And that's the task here in Bradford. So I'm Rand's support.